I am filming this on August 28th, 2024, Wednesday, at exactly 9 o'clock. I don't know when I'm going to choose to air this, but when this airs, then you know that it would be official for the public release. So, for about a year and a couple months, sorry, I'm itching, <laughs> but for about a year and a couple months, I have been debating about my identity. I've been praying heavily. on it, and I feel like I finally found myself. So, I'm gender fluid, and what does gender fluid mean? It means someone who's like, gender identity is not fixed. Of course, this is not to be confused with biological sex like male and female and intersex. Like, I know I was assigned male at birth and that's not changing whatsoever. But like, gender, for those who are new to like the thing, and you're allowed to like disagree, but gender, to me, is like, comes down to interest and it comes down to personality. And then that's when it becomes a little spectrum. I don't like saying masculine spectrum and feminine spectrum. I like saying ice color core. I color coordinate it blue and pink. I'm like this magenta hue, but it changes every single day, or at least every few days. So, what does it mean for me? Gendered fluid to me is like, I display both sides of the spectrum, but not enough to say like non-binary because I'm always going to be like skewing across the spectrum, while in my opinion non-binary is less, like it's more like tight with slight movement, while gender fluid is like nice flowy and stuff. So, I like to dress masculine. Like, as you can see here, I'm wearing, like, a t-shirt, but t-shirts are more unisex, and I hardly wear t-shirts. And I also like wearing ties and b button shirts and slacks, like I'm wearing these khaki pants right now. And also I have the very very gender neutral shoes on right now. I have the Vans. Don't get any more gender neutral than that. <laughs> but my mindset seems to be more feminine, per se. Like, I cannot, no matter how many times you try to ask me, I cannot and will never correctly or properly answer the question, what does a feminine mindset mean to you? But, it's also like, If I, I'm gonna take a moment right fast. I'm gonna just do one continuous shot so you guys know that I'm like being legitimate today and not like just putting a fun little video together. So when I, but I am gonna try to explain what it means when I think feminine. I mean, I just don't think like a boy. I don't have many friends that are assigned male at birth, but I have a really, really good amount of friends, including my number one bestie, 
who is who are assigned female at birth, with my number one best he being a cisgender female woman. Like so obviously that means I'm like around a bunch of the females and the women and girls and stuff like that, however you want to word it. <laughs> I, I'm terrible at wording things today, y'all. But, and like, I see how they react and how they act and how they think. And I'm like, I think I have that mindset. Of course, I would never really look like a girl too much, other than the fact that like, the only feminine presenting way I would be gender fluid is my use of makeup. I mean, makeup originally, I think in history books, was like made for really wealthy Egyptian men. But in today's norms, it's more, way more feminine than masculine, unless you're like on TV. Like, I wear makeup. Not as often as you think, though. It's mainly on, like, Sundays when I go to church or when I am on stage. But also, like, I'm... I'm, I'm gonna also make another disclaimer. I'm gonna bounce around a lot in this video between topics. I just feel like it's best if you, like... If I, like, bounce around, it helps me think. So another way about like presentation as someone who's assigned male at birth is like people think masculinity like big muscles or going to the gym or doing your hair a certain way and being like big and strong and stuff. I don't know if this is like a slur or not but I'm a twink. If you have not noticed, like, I'm a very slim build, and I also don't, like, have a lot of muscle. Like, I'm very delicate, <laughs> and things like that. <laughs> kind of, and that's a little bit kind of like the feminine stereotype, which is kind of slim build. But I'm not, like, we're not reaffirming stereotypes, I'm just using them as an example. And it's also in, like, the way I act. Like, I just don't, I just act feminine a little bit also. Like, it's, and sometimes it's even in the way I talk. Like, everyone knows the stereotypical gay voice. Like, hey, how's it going? Oh, yes, slay queen. But yeah, like, I do talk like that a lot of Especially, like, in public, <laughs> even though I really shouldn't or else I'd get beat up on the streets. <laughs> I know that all y'all are going to be confused by this, because, like, if you, like, looked at me going down the street, like, walking down the street and, like, look at me, like, my physical appearance, you're going to all be like, that's a dude. That is a dude. I still consider myself a dude, in a way. I don't know, that's just <laughs> the fun word to say. <laughs> dude. Dude. <laughs> but like, let's, uh, let's go back to the part about like, out to the other, to the moment where I said where I'm around a bunch of girls and women. I say girls because of like the maturity level and things like that, like, like especially when I was in high school, we just called them girls. Guys and girls, not boys and girls, not men and women. Guys and gals, not quite guys and dolls, I'm sorry. <laughs> but I was like, I like learned from them and like, and my number one bestie, who I'll remain anonymous today, but like for those of you who know me personally, you are gonna definitely know who I'm talking about. <coughs> Sorry. 
she has been a massive influence on my life. And we've only known each other for, at this point, less than a year. It will be one year on September 22nd. And also, she was the first person I told. The very first, yeah. The, the very first person I ever told was my bestie, who ex displays extremely feminine characteristics, but that's also because she's a girl, you know? And also, like, when I was in my childhood and adolescent years, I was around my mother a lot. Like, like, no offense to my dad. He's an awesome dad. I love my father. I'm just, like, around mom more. Like, we always, like, would, before I, I'm in college now, by the way, if you're wondering the setup. But we would always go and run errands together, and we'd always, like, take a lot of one-on-one -on -one time with each other. So, like, and obviously my mom, being a woman, very feminine characteristics shown. Now, of course, I've hung out with my dad a lot, and, like, of course, like, when I am with him, I do tend to show more masculine characteristics, but it's, like... Eh, for me. Now let's take a break from like the presentation and like how I think and let's talk about the identity itself. Pronouns. Let's talk pronouns. I will continue using the same two preferences. Obviously that's he, him, for if you want to be like simple, if you just want to take the simplicity route, or they, them, which is a little bit more geared at me. Because like, I feel like I'm closer to they more than I closer to he, but I don't mind being called he. For that matter, I don't even mind being called she, or it, or z, or there, or whatever y'all want to use. <laughs> because I'm not going to flip out over a two to four letter word. Like, my preferences are he, him, or they, them, but in all honesty, you can call me whatever you want. He, she, they, it, mental illness. <laughs> whatever you want to call me. I will not. Now, I am going to make a disclaimer. I haven't decided on it yet. But I am going to undergo a preferred name. I don't know what. I, I, I do have narrowed it down to my final four. But I will not share any of them yet. I will still use tie for like signing things and like writing my names down for like records and stuff and I'll still use my dead name Tyler to like signatures and checks and stuff like that because I'm not legally Ty yet but that's gonna be in the works soon And I've picked four names, and I really, really like these four names. But I, out of the four, I do kind of feel like there's one that stands out a lot. So I may just roll with that one. That will be revealed in a later video. So that will be part two. This is part one, which is me coming out as the identity of gender fluid. And now, I'm just going to throw this in here because I don't, because I feel like I need to clarify this too. Like, people are still going to ask me, well, if you're, like, 
gender fluid, then what's your sexuality? Um, I am also, this has been my sexuality for a long time. I am panromantic asexual. So panromantic asexual means you don't love someone for their gender. You don't love someone for like their parts or their body. You love someone for their person. You're like romantically and emotionally attracted to someone for their persona. Bodily attraction for me is very rare. It's not as rare actually, but it's still kind of rare. And that's more towards guys. Like, I'm more so naturally physically attracted to guys than I am to like girls or non binary. But that's what panromantic asexual is. Like, you love. Every, you just love a person, no matter how they express themselves. And, of course, asexual, like, I do not want to, like, have intimacy with any person in my life. I'm, like, not interested in stuff like that. So that's the basis on the video. And... Thank, I would like to take a moment and thank you all for understanding. If you still don't grasp on, do not worry. Like, I will be willing to answer any question you want. So, that's it. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye!